Welcome everybody, welcome to our Brainways webinar. Um, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, please can you keep your mute, your mics on mute? Um, and then if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to write them in the chat and then we will answer them at the end of the webinar. So this is our fifth webinar in our webinar series and I'm very excited to introduce this topic today. Brain health and wellness is very important, not only in these very surreal times, um, but all the time. Um, and I hope you find this webinar helpful and insightful. And then please reach out to us for further information going forward. Um, anything to do with this topic or the previous topics around online learning. Um, we have been in the education space for the past 22 years. Um, we understand the landscape. Uh, we understand education technology. We understand how adoption works, how everything links together. So please feel free to reach out to us and we will help you the best that we can. It gives me great pleasure to now introduce our Neuralink Master Certified Practitioners. So that's Deirdre Hose and Rista Deploy. Um, yeah, they've been working on um, this whole offering for the past, I think, year um, and we're very excited to be able to offer it into the market. They've been doing amazing things at Stellenbosch University. Um, Stellenbosch University recently just uh, bought a system called Academia from us um, and they've been facilitating the change process within the university and they're doing a fantastic job. So really excited about this webinar. Um, please take it away, Deirdre and Rista. Thanks so much, Klee. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I trust that you will find the info that, will be, that we will be sharing on this webinar this afternoon very valuable and insightful, as Claire said, and especially under the current circumstances we are finding ourselves in. I just want to share my screen um, and ensure that you can um, see it. Claire, if you can just give me an indication um, as soon as as you can see the slideshow, I'll appreciate that. We can see it. <laughs> Thank you. Great, thanks everybody. Um, yes, as Claire said, technology, that is technology for you, but it also works for us. So this is a great privilege and thank you very much uh, for your patience. Um, and off we go. So just from my side, yes, I trust that you will find this time spent with us uh, this afternoon very valuable and insightful, especially under the circumstances we're finding ourselves currently. So why this topic specifically? Well, since the lockdown has been announced, businesses and individuals had to adjust very rapidly to new circumstances and that ask of us to change our thinking, our doing, our behavior on a daily basis and in spite of everything that is going on in our immediate lives and in the world out there, we still have to perform optimally and this is causing people to stress at various levels and what we experience emotionally when we go through change like this and the stress it causes have a huge impact on our wellness. So change tends to be generally perceived in two ways, either positively or negatively. And when change is seen as offering new opportunities or new possibilities, or is seen as bringing about progress, innovation and growth, then it's quite easy to perceive it as positive. However, when change is seen as bringing instability, upheaval, unpredictability like we currently experience, or it is threatening, then it is perceived negatively. Now, due to the current COVID-19 situation, a lot of people experience the latter, as opposed to seeing the situation as positive and that it might also offer new opportunities for us. People go, go through change in their own 
unique ways, depending on what the change holds in for them personally. And the Kubler-Ross change curve on the screen shows us the different stages people go through during a period of change. Now, ranging from shock to frustration and making decisions right up to acceptance or integration of the new way of doing things in our lives. As it can be seen from these stages, people's attitudes towards change evolve as they become more familiar with the change and what it involves. If you take a couple of weeks back when we first heard about the pandemic and then when it you know, came closer and it was time for South Africa to be locked in, as opposed to where we are a couple of weeks down the line, already adapting to how things work, uh, by no means you know, is, it, is it easy for us, but there is some sort of an integration and, um, and familiarization around what we are currently experiencing. Now, let's take a moment to focus on stress because it is part and parcel of what we experience in periods of rapid change and actually in our daily lives. So stress occurs when change shifts people's physical and their psychological equilibrium, causing the body to prepare for the typical fight, fright, or flight response. It has a huge impact on our wellness on all levels. So while it is generally acknowledged that stress profoundly influences the way we think and behave, few people understand why this is so. So research shows us that the reason for our changed thinking and behavior under stress is that stress causes parts of the brain to literally switch off, which means that under stress, we may have little or limited access to certain brain functions, such as insight, creativity, strategic thinking, awareness of time in some cases, logical thoughts and focus on details, and it plays out in how we behave. Now, I've already mentioned that the corona pandemic is causing people to stress on various levels, meaning people can experience one or more of the different types of stresses. For example, neurological stress, which could include the stress you experience to now suddenly work from home, but your setup might not be that conducive at all to work from home. And this poses a huge challenge on a daily basis for you. Psychologically, you might be extremely worried about your finances right now and what the future holds for you. On a physical level, you might struggle to keep everything together at home in terms of work requirements, as well as attending to household chores, such as making food, washing, washing dishes, doing schoolwork, uh, schoolwork with your children all of a sudden. And this is causing you to feel really anxious and tired. And then lastly, also on an interpersonal stress level, suddenly the family is together in one home and everyone is experiencing these circumstances differently from their own point of view. Different behaviors are playing out and relationships have to be maintained more than ever before. And there's also the people that are all on their own, which do not have interpersonal contact at this stage that we uh, must also consider. Now, certain stress symptoms um, can vary from physiological, emotional, cognitive, social and interpersonal and on a behavior level and it in, in includes irritability, um, it could be emotional outbursts, it could be aggression, even social withdrawal, it can be substance abuse um, and it can even be on a physical level headaches, etc.
So those are the symptoms that we might experience either ourselves or, um, you know, with the people around us. Now, it's very important for us to manage our stress. And here are a few tips on how to do so. I'm specifically, specifically going to highlight the last five bullets, which we will also cover on the slides to follow. But in a time like this, when um, you are quiet, or some days more than other even, when you're more anxious, more stressed, breathing is one of the key exercises that will calm the brain and will help you to get to a more relaxed state of mind. Also, it's necessary for us to maintain a natural, healthy diet, to drink our water daily and to take appropriate supplements. We need to exercise at least 40 minutes a day, at least for five days of the seven days a week. We also need to do physical brain integration exercises to help switch on all the areas of the brain. Um, and we will cover this in more detail under brain fitness. And then also we need humor and we need a bit of fun. And to that point, humor gives us a sense of perspective on our problems. So let's look at some benefits of humor and laughter on the next slide. The main purpose of laughter is really to relieve stress because when we laugh, um, it lowers the cortisol and that's the stress chemical levels that, that has a, an immune suppressive effect on neurological stress. Laughter also releases endorphins which relieves pain, tension and depression and I think you know, making time for humor and laughter in times like this is really very important for us. As we even see on television, I mean, I don't know if you um, watch the news every evening, but at the end of the, um, of, the, of the Afrikaans channel, they have all these videos. And that is quite a very good strategy for them to follow, to help people to see some humor and things people do um, and gets, you know, that gets ourselves laugh, laughing at in periods of, um, you know, highly stressed period or periods of change. So humor, always good to incorporate in our daily lives. Now, the next couple of slides will focus on the actual brain drivers that influence optimal brain health and performance. What we have covered up to now in terms of emotions and stress um, is very much impacted by these drivers and the influence of that to keep us, um, you know, to function optimally on a daily basis and to really work on our brain health, health and performance. And the first one we are going to look at is our attitude and positive thinking. Now, our attitude towards life, towards various happenings, towards what's happening to us currently, and our experiences thereof, or anything for, for that matter, impacts our brain's performance. The way we look at things is something we have control over. The coronavirus we do not have control over. A lot of things um, are things that we do not have control over, but we need to create an awareness of everything that we do have control over, which attitude, positive thinking, and our mindsets are things like that. So even though it might not always feel like it, we do have control over it. And we can see our brain as a computer and our thoughts are the inputs to that computer and that will result in the ultimate performance in how that and how our brains will perform. Stressful events and change will actually always be part of our lives and it will always be with us but it is our mindsets 
that will ultimately determine how we see and experience it and how we behave. Now, our chemical state of mind is very important when it comes to attitude and mindset. And that is why it is important for us to understand the electrochemical functioning of the brain and the impact of the chemicals that run your brain. Our thoughts are all about electrical impulses that are being transmitted from one neuron to another. Now, everything in our body is always about chemicals, and there are many chemicals. For example, when we laugh, we feel happy because we have produced a chemical called serotonin that makes us feel good. Now, negative thinking and bad feelings cause people to secrete inhibiting chemicals like morphine and cortisol, which is not only blocking or inhibiting the electrochemical transmission between the neurons, but also weakens the immune system. And this causes our bodies to basically run on bad fuel. Now, just take a moment and think about this. If we constantly having negative thoughts, we are constantly producing bad chemicals and inhibiting uh, uh, chemicals that inhibits the transfer and the electrical impulses between the neurons or the brain cells. But on the other hand, if we apply positive thinking and we have good feelings, that causes uh, people to secrete facilitating chemicals like endorphins and serotonins, which then facilitates electrochemical transmission between neurons, thus also strengthening the immune system. So this causes the body to run on good fuel. Now, with our logic minds, we can already make this conclusion that it is much better for us to apply positive thinking, positive thoughts more often um, to ensure that we run on the good fuel. So we need to be constantly aware of the chemical state of our minds and to take deliberate actions to produce more facilitating neurotransmitter chemicals to ensure that we run on good fuel. The next slide speaks to our mindset. Now I'm going to take some time on this slide because it's very important for us to understand with regards to our mindset and the wellness of our brains. Now, we now know how the electrochemical functioning of the brain works. And it's now important for us to realize that we must take charge of our thinking. We must take charge of our emotions. We must take charge of our actions and our circumstances. So the way we handle life has everything to do with our mindsets. Did you know that only 6% of what we see, we actually see with the physical eye? 94% of our perception is formed with the mind's eye, and that is our inner reality. It relates to the neuron pathways that has already been created in your brain for a long period of time. So your eyes are the gates through which visual impulses comes to, into the brain, but the neuron pathways already created in your brain learns to make sense of those visual impulses. And this is the lens through which you actually see. So we are seeing all of this news 
on, on TV, we are listening to everything that is being said. And we have a certain set mindset already. And with that already formed pathways in our brain, we interpret what we see. And that becomes our reality. And that becomes our mindset and how we behave upon that. So people tend to pro project their truth and their reality onto the world. But that is why a negative mindset produces negative perceptions, which produces negative behavior. So if you have someone constantly, now every day since this uh, situation started, tell you that, oh, this is terrible, this is never going to end, this is going to kill us, that will become your reality in terms of how you interpret it with your inner mind's eye. This, this is so important because that is why we have to focus and we have to be aware and learn our children this, to understand that how we see things and how we interpret things in the world and what we speak and what we listen to is so important. You need to challenge your mind's eye constantly. Ask yourself the question, is what I believe aligned with the actual truth? Is the map inside my brain aligned with the realities of the world outside? Your self-perception, therefore, has a massive impact on how you view the world and others around you. Well, the good news is that there's a lot we can do on our own mindsets and attitudes, a lot of work we can do. It first of all takes of you to make a deliberate choice to change your thinking patterns. And secondly, it takes discipline to see it through. So when people choose to change their negative thinking to positive thinking, they start to look at themselves and the world in more constructive ways. They see more opportunity for improvement, possibilities to what could be, as opposed to be stuck in the what is. So we need to ask ourselves now, where are we? Are we stuck with the information that we are constantly seeing and hearing on TV and on radio? Or are we allowing ourselves to think differently and in constructive ways? So Nelson Mandela was famous for saying, I was in jail for 27 years, but my mind was never in jail, meaning that although he lived a life with physical constraints, he never allowed an unjust system to steal his optimism, his dreams, his sense of humor, and his positive thinking. So if we stay in jail with our minds, we become a victim of our circumstances instead of becoming part of the solution. Is that not so very important for where we find ourselves today, even at this moment, to make this switch, to understand this clearly, and to help ourselves and those around us to, to change the way we talk? It's now the challenge for each one of us during this period to check our current thinking, our mindset, our self-talk with regards to this worldwide corona pandemic crisis. And we need to ask ourselves, am I going to start thinking like a person that is learning what I need to do in order to get through this challenge in my life and my circumstances? Or have I accepted this as being too difficult and too big of an obstacle to overcome? And is there anything or is there actually nothing I can do about this. We make, we should make that decision. Moving on to the next slide. Ian Weinberg is a practicing neurosurgeon. He is also a pioneer in the application of psychoneuroimmunology, which is the scientific study of the influences of mind states on immune function. Now he gives us the following advice. 
When you change the way you think, you change your perception of reality. When you change your perception of reality, you change your expectations. When you change your expectations, you change your attitude. When you change your attitude, you change your behavior. When you change your behavior, you change your performance. And when you change your performance, you change your life. Isn't that profound? The amazing thing is that our brains are amazingly and wonderfully designed and made. And each and every one of us on this webinar today, we are able to change the way we think. And you can see the ripple effect that will have in our lives. Now, self-management starts with managing your mind, managing your thoughts, and programming yourself to overcome the obstacles you have to overcome. It means taking charge, like we said, of your mind and managing your mind towards your future goals. Set future goals, even during this time. What is it that I can do about it? What can I achieve? What is the solutions? Force yourself to think positively, think creatively, and think um, constructively during this time. Now, tips to improve your attitude and the thinking around, um, you know, periods of change is uh, things like, and I want to challenge you on this, especially the first couple of bullets. Make a decision today to go on a negative thoughts fast. Think about what you're thinking. Listen to your soundtrack. Pay attention to the pictures in your mind. Become aware of your negative thoughts, your feelings, your words, your actions, and not only your own, but also those that you are currently surrounded with. Try to replace the negatives with new constructive alternatives and reinforce the constructive, constructive alternatives constantly. We also need to replace those negative neuron pathways in our brain with the positive pathways. And that takes time. In fact, 42 days to change a, a pathway. So that says to us, we need to start as soon as possible and keep at it to replace the negatives with the new constructives. Just refuse to think or visualize negative thoughts. And if you can't say something constructive, then don't say it. There's a couple of other uh, tips as well, which we will also cover um, still to come. Now, the next driver is all about brain fitness. And brain fitness is about all the areas of the brain being accessible, receptive, and responsive to absorb and process information at optimum capacity. Now, the first avenue to explore if someone is not performing well is to ask the question, how brain fit they are. Brain fitness is a vital prerequisite for optimized performance, success, happiness, and efficiency. The first step towards performance improvement and effective learning and thinking is to use both brain hemispheres simultaneously in a bilateral fashion. Us as human beings are uniquely designed to function either homolaterally, and all people are born homolaterally, meaning we use one brain hemisphere at a time in an alternating fashion or we function bilaterally or integrated, meaning that we use both our left and right hemispheres, brain hemispheres, simultaneously, thus at the same time. Now, when we use our left and right brain hemispheres simultaneously, we apply whole brain thinking, thus we using the characteristics of the detailed left brain hemisphere as well as the big picture 
characteristics of the right brain hemisphere um, optimally. Now, situations often ask of us to think detailed as well as create a, a big picture. Um, facts, but also including creativity to, to the facts. And we can only do then we, that when we apply bilateral thinking or whole brain thinking. Now, to illustrate this, if you park your car in the street and you try to get to the entrance of your house from where you parked your car, for instance, by jumping on one leg only, you will definitely get to the front door, but it's going to take you longer and it may be harder for you to do. You will also be slower and you'll get tired quicker and you may not enjoy it at all. But if you do it by walking with both your feet, you will find it much easier and comfortable. Now the same applies to learning and it's important, especially also with for those of you that um, have children and kids at school, to realize that when they learn, this is something that's very applicable. If you tend to be more homolaterally as opposed to bilateral, you will find your homework and your learning sometimes harder and more difficult to do as opposed to applying whole brain thinking where you can utilize both hemispheres to actually learn and process information. Now, this often this is often how we um, you know, how learning and thinking is for some people who use one brain hemisphere at a time and in an alternating fashion. And that is why learning and thinking sometimes feel hard and difficult. And you will often hear uh, people say that as well. So we are definitely not born brain fit. It is something that we need to develop and maintain through regular physical exercises and mental stimulation. Um, and on that point, some tips to improve your brain fitness include considering taking up cross-lateral sports like gymnastics, dancing, aerobics, swimming, tennis, etc. And to do mental exercises like chess, doing Sudoku, filling in crossword puzzles, etc. And if you do not do any sports, you can do cross-lateral movements in the comfort of your own home and it should be at least 50 repetitions three times a day. Now let's have some fun and practice this and we'll trust technology will work with us. <laughs> this video I'm going to play will give you an indication of such movements and you know what they say, there is never a better time like the present to start doing something. So if you have the space and you can do it with Tian in the video, let's try that together. Here we go. I trust um, you could hear the music. Um, I see there's a message that the sound is not hard enough. I'll adjust that accordingly with our next videos. But yes, those are indications of cross-lateral uh, uh, exercises. We are moving swiftly along um, and the next driver speaks to sleep. So sleep has a major impact on our brain performance um, and especially a lack of sleep reduces our mental alertness and that could result in fatigue. 
So although each person needs a different amount of sleep, most individuals need somewhere between seven to nine hours of sleep per night. But it is important to know that it is not just the amount of sleep we get, but also the quality that determines how rested we will be the following day. Some benefits of sleep, when we sleep long enough and deep enough, the brain produces vital neurotransmitters that are essential for happiness and healing as those neurotransmitters strengthen the immune system and it helps the body repair damaged cells. Sufficient sleep helps the body to preserve energy and rests the muscles and it makes the mind more receptive and contributes definitely to better focus and concentration. Now, developing sound sleeping strategies to ensure we maintain quality sleeping habits in a demanding world has become an art that most people have not mastered well enough. Medium to long term, it will impact our health, our lifespan, our performance and our happiness. So here are some tips to develop sound sleeping strategies. I'll mention uh, a few. Develop relaxation habits before you go to bed. I think a very important one is to avoid mental overstimulation and especially, you know, around the cell phones these days and technology, um, you know, it's not ideal to sit in bed before bedtime on your cell phones. We all know that, but we still do it. But it's definitely not a good sound sleeping strategy. It keeps us awake and it keeps the mind, um, you know, very active. Also things like blocking out noise, avoid eating a heavy meal three hours before bedtime, etc. Um, are all good sleeping strategies for us to consider. The next driver is all about brain food. So your lifestyle and the food you eat have a direct influence on your information processing ability. Uh, also on your emotions, on your health overall and your concentration. That's actually how your brain performs overall. Now your brain needs energy to perform optimally and efficiently. And the energy your brain produces comes from a combination of the food you eat, the water you drink and the oxygen you inhale. So if we feed our brain with a low energy diet, it won't perform well. But if we feed our brains with high energy diet, our brain will work optimally and efficiently. Perhaps the biggest culprit in our environment when it comes to energy blockage is processed foods. So, and especially now during this lockdown period, it is sometimes so easy to eat a lot of comfort and junk food and processed food, but we should really try to limit unhealthy eating as much as possible because it will make us feel bogged down and it definitely not contributes to optimal brain function. So remember, there's not one single food that contains all the different supplements that the body need. Therefore, your diet must consist, consist of a variety of foods. So looking at the tips to improve your healthy, healthy eating habits, rather try to include more full grain foods, protein, natural oils such as olive oil, fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts, and always don't forget the water. And that brings us to the importance of water as a driver for optimal and health, healthy brain functioning. Going hand in hand with the brain food, um, it is very important that we are sufficiently hydrated because that relieves fatigue and it improves our productivity as well as our mood. You can actually increase your water intake when you feel more stressed. It is true and a fact that 75 to 80 percent of your total body mass consists of water and water constitutes 75 percent of your brain, 83 percent of your blood, uh, blood volume, 22 percent of your bones, 75% of your muscles, 
And very importantly, it facilitates the electrical transmission that we already touched on. It is a detoxifying agent. It increases our concentration and it energizes our brain by increasing the oxygen um, intake of our brain. Tips and benefits. Um, I'm not just in lieu of time. I'm, I'm very mindful of our time, but um, we've already heard and I'm going to repeat it. You know, drink your eight glasses of water and increase that um, in, we, when you are under stress because it helps to regulate your body temperature. It helps your body to absorb nutrients. Um, drinking water on an empty stomach purifies the colon. It makes it easier to absorb nutrients. And very importantly, it removes waste and toxins from your body. That is very important. Water is also a natural remedy for headache, which is one of the stress symptoms that you can, um, you know, uh, uh, occur and uh, incur. Now, if we move to the next driver, which is oxygen, it's very important for us to understand that our brains run on oxygen just like a motor car runs on petrol. So let's look at the benefits of increased oxygen for our brains. So obviously you get oxygen through breathing. That is why deep breathing is so highly recommended as it oxygenates your blood. Breathing deeply also helps with stress management as it calms the brain. Exercise is very good for your body and good for your brain because exercise enriches the blood with oxygen. So through physical exercise and breathing, your brain literally gets more oxygen. And by drinking your eight glasses of water a day, you ensure the increase of oxygen. And then furthermore, you can also surround yourself with plants in your home and workspace. Tips to ensure that you, that you intake or that you increase your oxygen intake includes doing physical exercise, drinking your water, and doing breathing exercises. Um, we call it breathing exercises because it has to do with deep breathing. It's not the shallow breathing that we uh, do all the time. It is the deep breathing that we need that has a real impact. We are going to watch a quick video that will take us through one such exercise. And then I want to encourage you to partake in this exercise. I'm not going to play the uh, complete video, just do one or two or three breaths and then we will continue. You will slowly take in a deep breath. Deirdre, sorry to interrupt, but you need to um, select the um, function to play your computer audio. Again, I think when you logged out, then it stopped doing that. Apologies for um, that. Let's quickly sort that out. Okay, here we go again. And if it's still soft on your side, maybe you can just adjust your, uh, your computer sound. Here we go. You will slowly take in a deep breath, hold it, and then slowly release it. Each one of these steps will be timed to last five seconds. We'll display a counter on the screen, but it's important that you time yourself when you're practicing on your own. It's easy to go too quickly if you aren't paying attention. One quick tip before we get started. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth as if you're blowing through a straw. This will help to slow yourself down. Consult your physician before practicing, especially if you have a history of epilepsy or heart disease. Let's begin. Follow the on-screen timer to pace yourself. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. 
hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. I'm sure those of you who did the breathing exercise um, can feel that you can actually feel it in your physical body, how um, you, know, you are more calm and relaxed. And that is the effect of deep breathing on the body and the brain. Because when we're going through st stress and we're anxious, the brain is actually in a threat state um, and breathing and uh, you know, breathing and exercise helps us to get back into a calm and relaxed state. Moving on to the next brain driver uh, or the driver of brain health is movement and exercise. Now, lack of movement is a major in inhibiting factor of brain performance as it slows down electrical transmission in the brain, which we have already dealt with. Um, and doing exercises produces neurotransmitters called endorphins. You will remember that's the good chemicals that strengthens our immune system and makes us feel good. It also helps with exercising or, or sorry, excreting stress hormones. And that are, you know, um, the things that we want to, we want to prevent that. So cross lateral movements activate different brain regions and hemispheres and improve the brain fitness. And that's part and parcel of the movements. So when we move um, and, and when we stretch, you know, we increase the oxygen intake. Um, so benefits of movement is, is very important, especially around stretching um, and lengthening exercises, because that also increases the cerebrospinal circulation, which enhances your ability to focus. Let's, um, I have another video for you, for, for you just in terms of stretching exercises. And this is something that we can really throughout the day, especially those of you that are still working, that is, um, you know, partaking in a lot of virtual meetings um, and, and, and um, virtual platform exercises that you can do on a daily basis and constantly throughout the day to ensure that uh, you focus better. So tips to improve movement and exercises, we've actually touched on this, so I'm going to skip this slide, um, just to, again to reiterate how important it is. And then we are moving on to the use it or lose it challenge. Now, we have now gone through all the drivers and it is a lot of information to take in, but making small changes and just making the decision and taking the first step will create new inputs and will have a great outcome for us. So brain optimization is never ever finished. 
it is a lifelong journey and we have to keep on working and improving our brain health because if we stop our brand, brain health deteriorate, deteriorates and by default this has an impact on the quality of our lives. So brain health, yes, in, in the period of rapid change and during this period, but it is a lifelong thing that we must always be aware of. Um, and in terms of the drivers, it is important for us to, to see how we can use it and not lose it. Because if you're not going to attend to all of those drivers on a daily basis and be constantly aware of how you can apply these principles, you will lose it and your brain will not function uh, optimally as you would like it to be, um, to function. And also the brain will not be that healthy that you want it to be. So in closing, uh, something for us to think about. Our habits now in this period have basically been frozen. We are being forced out of our habits. We need to challenge our habits, our fears and behaviors and we need to replace them with new constructive alternatives. And there's actually not a better time than now because we have to reinvent ourselves to um, adapt to the current circumstances. So we have to think differently and we have to change our behaviors um, and our thinking, etc. What has not been canceled is life, tomorrow, love, relationships, hope, that's very much still intact. So COVID-19 is bringing an opportunity for us to helping us break habits and dealing with behaviors we should have been trying to break for years already. We now have the opportunity to rethink who we are, what life is about, why we get up in the morning, what we are living for, where we put our energies and what we can do with the knowledge at hand to increase our brain health for optimal performance. This was a very nice experience for me and I thank you um, that you spend this time with us this afternoon and thanks Claire, I'm going to hand back to you um, and if there's any questions that we cannot attend to now, we are also very happy to address that via email, etc. Thanks, everyone. Over to you, Claire. Thank you. Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks for that great presentation. Um, there aren't any questions as yet, um, but they're just, just very, a lot of people just saying thank you and how insightful it was. Um, we will definitely um, be sharing this presentation with everybody. So we will share the recording with you. So you're welcome to share it um, out with your colleagues um, as you've requested. Um, and then there's just one last thing. So we have 25 um, brain driver profiles to give away. Um, and the way that you enter that is by, I'm gonna just add the link here um, in the chat box. So if you just click on that link in the chat box and you fill out your information, um, we're going to put you through into a lucky draw to win one of the brain profiles. Deirdre, do you just want to spend a couple of minutes just talking about what that is exactly? 100% uh, clear. Um, I'll be sending you a mail and it will come from the Neuralink website. So um, that it's a short test. Uh, the value of that test is about 850, 850 Rand and it will specifically um, speak to the brain drivers that we've covered in this webinar and that will give you an indication of your current state of um, you know how you function with these drivers um, and how you are influenced uh, by means of these drivers currently and that gives you then an indication you know of what you can improve i always say you cannot improve um, that that you haven't measured so although we went through the slides and you could already relate with some of the information, if you do this assessment, um, it will be black and white in terms of where you find yourself with certain of the drivers. And it will also give you um, tips on how to improve that. Thanks, Glee. 
Great, thank you so much. Yeah, so I've added the link into the chat box. So please click on the link, fill out your details, and we will be um, putting your names into a lucky draw and we will let everyone know who the winners are um, tomorrow. So yeah, click on the link, fill in your details. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was great to have everyone here. Um, and yeah, be happy. Um, be healthy and uh, we will send out the recordings shortly and then um, we will also be inviting you to our next webinar. So thanks so much and thank you Deirdre for your time um, and all the best everybody. Goodbye.